Hello, thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Stuart. I'm a classical record collector, also a professional seller. My website, lpclassical.co.uk. This is an unboxing video. I've had uh, two parcels arrive. eBay sellers have sent me uh, records which I've purchased and I've not looked inside them. I've even forgotten what I bought. So it's going to be a complete surprise. Not a complete surprise because obviously I remember what I bid on and what I won. But let's have a look. Let's have a look. So I've got, uh, let's start off with this, let's start off with this one. I must say the packaging really impresses me on this. The, it uh, looks like um, very thick card here. I mean, you can't bend it even if you wanted to. It would take, uh, you need to be somebody like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger to bend that into, well, maybe not quite, but you know what I mean. It's very well packed. So I've got a pair of scissors here. I'm just going to be very careful and just open up this box, find out what's inside. While I'm doing that, I'll just say that my I've got 30 records arriving from one seller who sent the whole lot in um, via Every. They came last night when I wasn't in at quarter to six, and I've rescheduled um, for a delivery to the local post office. They didn't arrive today. I'm hoping they're going to arrive tomorrow, but with Every, you never know because if you're not in when they call on the first occasion, then frankly, in my experience, it could be as much as a week before you get your delivery rescheduled. I'm not really, I don't like buying from sellers who use every, I prefer Royal Mail. All these that I'm, like I did unboxing yesterday, they arrived by Royal Mail. So I've had four packets arrived by Royal Mail and from every, yeah, okay, I wasn't in last night when it came. I should have checked tracking to see that they were coming, but I didn't do that. So in a way, I suppose it's my fault, but okay, so here we are. So I'm just now taking this item out. Let's have a look and see what it is. Okay. Oh, that's impressive. There we are. Anyway, there's the box. I'll be preserving that and using it. Obviously, I do sell records myself. Here we are. Well, I mean, you don't get much more professional than this. The way that he's actually packed this is really impressive. In fact, maybe I could learn a few lessons from him. He's got it in a uh, plastic uh, cover there, protective cover to keep it, um, stop it from scuffing in the post, which is a really good idea. He's got the invoice there and it's really, it's really incredibly impressive. Uh, he's also got a list there of what he's selling. So, you know, for marketing purposes, he's obviously trying to, um, trying to sell me some more records, which is fine. And let's have a look. And he's put his, um, He's put his leaflet inside. Let's have a look at the record itself and let me talk about it, why I bought it. So we've got the, we've got Kempf, Wilhelm Kelf, sorry, not Kempf. So yeah, we've got Kempf playing the piano. More importantly, we've got Pierre Fournier, the French cellist, playing the uh, Beethoven cello sonatas. Now it's not the original issue. And um, so it's a reissue. These boxes, DG were doing in the 70s, I think mid 70s. I've got a couple of uh, Bra Brahms piano concertos in a similar type of box. They also use them for opera sets. I think it's quite a nifty box. Let me just uh, put these records here and I'll show you those in a minute. So this is what the box looks like. It's in really good condition. Quite a lot of the time when you get these, I'm not sure what they call them. It's like a sort of gatefold box or wallet. Yeah, I would, I would normally call this a gatefold wallet. So this one takes two records, a superb picture on the back of Kempf and Fournier. Really good, really good presentation. Uh, somebody's written the number 157 on the back there. I don't know why they've done it, but uh, that's not really too serious on a record like this. But it's in such beautiful condition that I'm really pleased I got it. How much did I pay for it? Um, I think including shipping, it cost me about £8, which I must admit I'm really pleased with. I'm surprised that it that it didn't sell by the time I got to it because it was on a buy it now. It wasn't an auction, so I don't know. I would think I was just lucky. I mean, I don't think it's. I don't think I'm massively underpaid for it. I think that I think it's worth more than that, frankly. And if I sold that on my website, I'd be selling it for about twenty pounds, which I think is a fair price because it's such a superb uh, performance, and a lot of people don't mind having the reissue. So let's have a look at the actual records. Here they are two records and I can see that I checked this of course they're both pressed this is pressed pressed in West Germany 
I don't know how that's going to come up on the uh, on the video. Just looking at the condition, the condition looks excellent. So I think that he graded an EX or VG plus, but looking at the condition, I mean, they look like they're in superb condition. So what I'm going to do is let's give this one a quick spin. Um, here's uh, let's have a look. Let's give this one a quick spin, find out how it sounds, whether I've got it as good a bargain as I thought that I have. Here we are. Here's my Riga Planer 2. Drop the, drop the budget stylus. Oh, it's a little bit... Uh... You can probably hear that's actually a bit noisier than I thought it would be. Let's try this. Right, so it's not noisy as you get in, but it is, it's not unusual for records to be noisy on the lead-in. I'll get my groom out, my, my spray, and I'll try and reduce that noise. I'm not sure if it's going to be like that on all of them. Uh, we'll soon find out. But uh, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed that it's noisy on that side. Let's, let's just quickly flip it over and try the other side. <laughs> I'm always curious whether it's just a one-off or whether they're all like this. Let's have a listen. Yep, same problem. Let's push it over. So it seems to be it seems to be a problem that's affecting the start of the record. I wonder why that is. I can't see anything visible. But I'm going to clean these. I'm going to clean this record and see if I can improve it with my uh, method, which I know a lot of you disapprove of. I use this car upholstery spray called Groom. Okay, let's have a look at the, uh, the other record. Yep. So I've got to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed that I've got that um, sort of. How can I call it? Uh, it's a bit more than background rustle, isn't it? But I've got some hopes that I'll be able to sort of clean it up and make it better. Okay, let's try the other one, see if we can do better with this. So this one's been nicely packaged as well. And I will be preserving, I preserve all my packaging. I like to recycle. And in my, my, in, in my other business, which I've got, um, my suppliers usually send my goods to me with a lot of polystyrene packaging which absolutely drives me crazy because polystyrene can't be recycled it just goes into landfill I don't like that and believe it or not I save up all my polystyrene from my other business and I put it in big black bags and I've got a local mail order company that comes and buys it off me not for much money but they save money and it makes me feel better that at least this polystyrene is being passed on yeah so I'm a big favor I'm a big fan of recycling and yeah, this is really, again, really nicely packed. There's a stiffener in there. And here we are. Very professionally done. I must say that I'm really impressed with a lot of eBay sellers um, who are selling records. Everything seems to be arriving in such beautiful sort of packaging. So let's have a look. Yep, there's a letter in there. Right, okay, we've got another interesting record here. Here. Yeah. It's a 10 inch record and it's Schneiderhan playing one of the uh, pot eaters for violin solo. Now I must say that I was expecting a 12 inch record. I think I probably didn't read the listing properly, but it doesn't matter. I'm still happy with it. I think I paid about, I think I paid about 12 pounds including shipping, which a lot of you are probably gonna say is too much for this, but I don't know. I don't think it's too much and I think that it says here, look, it said, it, you won't be able to see it, but it says here a recording 1955. So I'm presuming that this is probably issued in mono. And that maybe this is the, this is the original 
if any of you have any information to the contrary that this is not the original, let me know. And of course, with Archive, you get this beautiful, really informative uh, card which tells you uh, the record number, the soloist, where it was recorded. Let's have a look. Hall of Studio. You have a look at that. The Hall of Studio is the Mozart Saal, I think that means Mozart Hall Day Concert House. So Mo Mozart Hall of uh, Concert House. Um, producer Dr. Fred Hamill, technical supervisor Werner Grimmer, and uh, what else does it say on it? Uh, it's got a list of the tracks and okay and it's got the <laughs> birth date and, and death of uh, Bach born 21st of the 3rd 1685 died 28th of July 1750 well that's good that's interesting to know instrumentation violin solo publishers Baron Reiter Verlag well I've heard of Baron Reiter because uh, my son used to play the violin and we used to get him some uh, Baron Reiter scores. The violin is a Stradivari, Cremona 1704. And the recording date is the 12th of, um, well, anyway, 1955. 12.15.1.1955. I'm not sure what would that mean. Maybe that means the, it would be the 15th probably. The 15th of December 1955. Okay, that is in absolutely mint condition. <laughs> I'm really pleased with that. No, I think it's worth the money, this. I, I really do think it's worth the money. So let's just have a look at the jacket. Okay, the jacket's discoloured. Well, come on. I mean, this was probably issued in the, in the 50s, but it's not torn. I'm really pleased with the condition of it. And let's have a look at the record itself. Okay, made in England. Yeah, so it's not made in Germany. Made in England. It looks like it's in fairly reasonable condition. But the proof is the proof is in the playing. So let's have a go. Let's have a go with this uh, Bach Partita and see if it's uh, an improvement on what we listened to before. Here we go. absolutely heavenly I'll tell you obviously you're getting it in mp3 quality but I can tell you that, that sounds absolutely amazing the tone on the violin beautiful analog sound uh, let's have a listen yeah okay so uh, I'm not complaining that the surface is a little bit rustly obviously on a record of this age you, you can expect that so let's just have a listen near the end of the record Tell you something, that's worth paying a lot of money for, it really is. This is why, this is why violin records are in such hot demand. Because uh, the violin on vinyl, on you know, good analog system and everything, analog recording, sounds absolutely amazing. This is why the violin records that the Japanese and the South Koreans and you know, people in the West as well are chasing because they just sound so amazing. So uh, let's have a look. On the second side we've got the Chacon. Let's have a quick listen to that. How does that sound? Well, that's the great Chacon. Uh, a lot of people think it's the great, some people even think it's the great, greatest piece of music ever composed. And I've got it on this, on this fabulous old record. I think that's well worth the money what I've paid for that, £12. And um, I don't know what I would sell it for, certainly a lot more money than that. I think, that, I think that's a bargain for me, actually. Anyway, well, that's it. I'm really pleased with that record. I'm not so pleased with the, uh, with the PA. Pierre Fournier, mainly because, because of the noise at the start of two sides. Look, I'm going to try and clean it up and I'll report back and let you know whether it makes any difference. 
Okay, so thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed that and bye for now.